Hello everybody and welcome back to Gospel-Centered Gaming, the only place where Jesus saves our games and our lives. Again, my name is Clark, and welcome back to the dark side of Persona 3, the realm of villains. Today, we're rolling in the deep with the team that causes tumultuous trouble, heartbreak, and confusion, Strega. I mean, what anime game is complete without a villain team, am I right? Probably not. Regardless, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe and ring the bell for more. Let's get to it. Let's get that 411 on Strega. Strega is another team of Persona users, but unlike our 2020 Vision heroes, their Personas are not, let's say, natural. Turns out Mitsuru was not the only child the Kurijo group experimented on. The scientists at the Kurijo group wanted to create more Persona users for their purposes and gathered more teenagers, why is it always teenagers, for trials. Included in these subjects were the trio we know, Takaya, Jin, and Jidori. They were the only three subjects, or should I say victims, honestly, to survive the cruel experimentation and awaken to their personas. Unlike our shadow fighting students, however, Strega's personas don't like them very much. Unless you call choking just an aggressive hug, then I guess it's okay? No. No, not really. In order to prevent their personas from going berserk and killing them instantly, they are forced to ingest suppressant pills, which have the very minor side effect of shortening their lifespan. No biggie. At least not to Takaya. We'll get to that. But anyway, the goal of Strega is to stop Seas from destroying the Tower of Demise, aka Tartarus, and ending the Dark Hour, for they do not wish to lose their powers. Later on, their goal changes, but again, we'll talk about that shortly when we focus on Takaya. In their attempts to stop Seas, Chidori kidnaps Junpei, Takaya kills Shinjiro, and another tear-jerking event happens that we will also talk about later. Man, all these pushbacks. I guess you'll just need to watch the whole video. Wink wink. My lame jokes aside, this team is full of some fascinating and twisted individuals, so let's jump in and examine their characters. We're gonna start with the creepiest, skinniest, and palest of the bunch, Takaya. Takaya is a jerk. His headband is stupid, his tattoos are lame, and he can never find a shirt that fits him. Aside from being aesthetically unpleasing and being a meanie, Takaya is a good parallel for the Antichrist. There are many details about the characteristics and appearance of the Antichrist to be found in scripture. But to sum it up as nicely as I can, scripture indicates that he will be an intelligent, charismatic ruler who will be given power and authority from Satan, who will be worshipped and marveled by the whole world, who will exalt himself above and blaspheme God, and who will wage war against the followers of Jesus. The Antichrist will also mimic Christ in several ways, one of which will be a seeming quote-unquote resurrection in which he will seem to receive a mortal wound and the wound will be healed. This will cause the world to marvel at and follow it. One popular hypothesis about this event yet to come is that the Antichrist's wound will seem fatal, but it would not have killed him or that his wound would have killed him if he had not been healed. Either way, the hypothesis states that the Antichrist will not die, but that this again quote-unquote resurrection is a deception and a false miracle. This is backed up by scripture's account of the character of God and of Satan, namely that God alone is the giver of life, and that Satan cannot create life, and by Paul's account of the Antichrist being ushered in by Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing. If you'd like more details, I'll leave a link in the description to the article I found that summed up all of this and has some additional information. So do we see any of these characteristics in Takaya? Well, yes. Not all of them, mind you, but none of our parallels thus far have been perfect. Let's start with his leadership. Takaya starts as simply the leader of Strega, in charge of Jin and Chidori doing random crimes through a weird internet website and seeking to kill the members of Seas, or at least stop them from destroying Tartarus in the Dark Hour. As we've discussed in a previous video, the main character is an excellent parallel to Jesus, and being the combat leader of Seas, the other members could be considered his followers, making the other members of Seas parallels for Jesus' disciples, followers of Jesus. Thus, here's parallel number one. Takaya waged war against the members of Seas, just as the Antichrist will wage war against the followers of Jesus. Second, let's look at his appearance. Though he's creepy, I think it's apparent that Atlas and the team who designed Takaya had a particular goal in mind. Takaya is essentially a creepy version of the traditional European depiction of Jesus from the Crusades period that we see in old paintings and churches. 
I emphasize European because it is very unlikely that Jesus, a Middle Eastern Jewish man, would have looked like this famous depiction at all. He likely would have been brown or olive toned with short curlier hair. So if you're watching this video and thinking that the Jesus you or we worship is white, you need to think again. Social justice adjacent tangent aside, the traditional European image of Christ is white with long wavy brown hair and a beard and without blemish on his skin. Depending on the depiction, he is also either pretty toned or jacked, or he is emaciated. In paintings, Jesus is also often depicted with a halo around his head to indicate his holiness. If you've been watching the screen and seeing how Takaya is designed, I imagine some bells are ringing in your mind. Takaya is pale, sickly pale, and has long wavy hair. Takaya is toned, yet emaciated, and sports a very short and stubbly beard. And the icing on the cake for me, Takaya's headband looks very much like a halo, or maybe a crown of thorns. Remember that I said that scripture shows the Antichrist will mimic Christ? While scripture indicates that he will not even look human, I can't help but make the parallel that Takaya mimics Christ in that he looks like a creepy version of this traditional European depiction, just as the Antichrist will mimic Christ by his actions. Now let's get to the real juicy stuff. So before defeating the 12th and final giant Shadow, C squares off with Jin and Takaya on the Moonlight Bridge. They are overwhelmingly defeated and decide to take a dive off the bridge, making everyone effectively think that they committed suicide. Suicide. A few weeks later, we find out that they did not die, and a few months after that, Takaya rises up to become the charismatic leader of a cult that worships Nyx and welcomes her arrival. Takaya is even heralded by some as a savior or a messiah of some kind. This directly parallels the Apostle John's God-given vision of the Antichrist that we looked at in Revelation 13. Takaya quote-unquote died or received a mortal wound by jumping off the bridge, but was healed, so to speak, or rather, he did not die. As Takaya put it on 1122, fate permitted him to live, and he was chosen. The Antichrist will also be chosen, as the dragon, representative of Satan, will imbue the beast with power and authority. Takaya also claims that Nyx has imbued him with power as well, and as the cult leader, spreads many lies and false teachings, most of them surrounding the idea that Nyx's coming and subsequent destruction of the world will actually be the world's salvation. There are so many false teachings that I'm not going to get into them, but this parallels the Antichrist as well, who will exalt himself above and blaspheme God, effectively spreading false teachings. But thankfully, the last parallel is also accurate. Takaya, as well as Nyx, were defeated by the main character and the other members of Seas, the Antichrist and Satan will be completely defeated by the victorious Christ Jesus and thrown into the lake of fire and destroyed as judgment. No matter how bleak it gets, or how many people believe the lies, God in his righteousness always wins. Hallelujah. Now with the rest of the time I have in this video, I'm going to briefly talk about Jin. There is no biblical character that Jin parallels that I could think of, but Jin does exemplify a particular and peculiar action that we've actually already been talking about and that the Bible warns against often, believing false prophets. False prophets are as they sound like people who proclaim that they have heard the word of God but are actually only spreading lies and or their own thoughts and beliefs. Takaya is one, and the Antichrist can be considered one as well. Jin is extremely loyal to Takaya and seems to take what he says to heart. As a result, Jin makes himself useful to Takaya and becomes his right-hand man, believing that they are doing what is right. As Jin alludes to before he dies, Jin is loyal to Takaya because he believes Takaya saved him from darkness. What darkness Jin is referring to exactly, I do not know, but if I had to assume something, it probably has something to do with the experiments done upon them by the Kurijo group. As we the players know, however, Jin couldn't be any more wrong. Jin, by following Takaya and becoming a very loyal sidekick, actually doomed himself to his fate. Ultimately, Jin's pride leads him to rather die than be saved by seas or be eaten by the shadows. He takes one of his own grenades and blows himself up, unfortunately leaving him lost forever. So Jin's story is pretty tragic, and if we can take anything from it, it would be be wary of who you listen to, don't believe just anybody, and you can tell the false prophets by their fruits. Takaya only brought the message of death and destruction, and he killed many people. If Jin had seen that as wrong and understood what that meant, he may have been able to understand that Takaya was not actually someone to trust, even though he owed him his life. 
So that's where I'm gonna wrap up this video. It's a little shorter than I thought it was gonna be, which I guess is a good thing, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, write a comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you know when more is coming, and make sure to leave me some positive feedback in the comments section. I really appreciate all constructive criticism, and I would love to read them and look forward to how I can improve for the next series, because I am recording all of these at once and just uploading them on a schedule. So sorry that I'm not gonna really be able to respond in a timely fashion, um, but I will definitely definitely read them and be responding to them in the comments section. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderfully blessed day, God bless you, and I will see you again next time.